Hello and welcome to my abbreviated ukulele curriculum guide. So before you do anything, you need to make sure you have your ukulele tuned. You should know how to operate a tuner. Uh, the tuning for the strings are G, C, E, and A. G, C, E, and A. You can always check online for how to tune, but make sure that is correct. Also, ukulele recommendations. Amazon has a great price on the Protégé by Cordoba. You can find it uh, for $36 and it comes with a case. Another great recommended one is Mitchell, which is about $39 and does not come with a case, but it's one of the best sounding along with this one in its price range. Do not get anything cheaper than $30. It will be most likely defective or not good enough. The strings are not good enough. It will take more work to fix it than to actually play it, so forth. Spend $40 on ukulele and it will last several years. Move on. So you wanna first set your room up correctly. Now, if you do not know what Mallet Madness is and you don't know who Artie Almeida is, don't attempt ukuleles. I'm just letting you know right now, don't do it. Do Mallet percussion first. This is how the children understand music, how they understand chords, how they understand progression and chord change. This is an example of what my room looks like when I set up in the Mallet Madness style. Notice how it's a grid, six rows, and then columns of four. Usually my classroom size is around that. I'll add a few more if I have any one bigger. Notice how it's intermingled with different instruments. For this specific picture, I have metallophones, xylophones, uh, and I have the ukuleles. I like my Mitchell ukuleles because that comes in the box. You can also use handbells, boom markers, whatever fits. All right, so we have our first lesson. You wanna make sure that you have the room set up correctly. Your kids know what their procedures are. How do they sit? Where do they sit? And what way do they get to their line? How do they rotate? We'll talk about rotations in a second. What is the instrument positions? Because they should not instantly go there and touch it. It should be on the floor. I call this at rest position. It should not be touched. First position, they could hold it, pick it up. Second position, it's actually against their body and ready to play. And then at rest means that they are attentive, but they are looking and their hands are right here. So let's move on to what you're gonna learn, station song, uh, ukulele techniques, and then a few chords for this first lesson. This should take about 45 minutes, 50 minutes in a classroom. This is a station song, it's very easy. All aboard, one, two, three, four. Mallets down, get off the floor, five, six, seven, eight. Hurry, don't be late, hurry, don't be late. So you always wanna make sure you say the last line until the kids are in place. Run this rotation. The way you rotate is if you have the lines, here's the first station, second station, third station, fourth station, fifth station, for example. First person moves to the second station, third, uh, second person moves to the third station, third person moves to the fourth station, fourth station, fifth station, last station goes all the way around the classroom and goes back to the first station. You rotate the same instruments over and over again so that the children play the same ones and I stay in the same line. This keeps it from getting too mixed up, but that way the children have some good organization. Moving on, we have our ukulele information. Left hand holds ukulele, right hand plays it. That's easy. Parts of the ukulele, do not teach your children how to tune. I'm gonna tell you again. Do not teach elementary students how to tune an instrument, ever. Doesn't matter if it's ukulele or guitar. You need to do that in a private lesson setting. You need to do that in a setting that's going to allow multiple practice time. Imagine your orchestra teacher or a band teacher. They would not just teach that one time, maybe do it a couple more times. No, they go around and walk and fix it, approach it the same way you would approach a middle school or high school instrument. Teach them how the parts of it, let them look at it, but not let them ever touch the top. That is no student allowed unless you're doing a ukulele club throughout the year or you're teaching private lessons on a weekly basis. How to hold the instrument is very easy. It's always left hand holding the actual neck, right hand is supporting the uh, actual body against your belly, I'll show you right here. So it would be resting against your thigh on top of it right here and against your belly. This, unless the children are very, very short, do not let them put that on their thigh. There, it should be resting up above the thigh so that it's against your body, against your body on the thigh. Unless they're very short, they can hold it like a guitar. It has to be like this. This is called the modern position, but it is the easiest one. It allows you to be very flexible with other techniques later down the line. Uh, at rest position, I like to tell them, 
Their hand should always be resting on the strings when we're not playing. They can hold it, but do not be playing it and have it rested. How to pick the string. This is a great way to get them to learn the names. So we have our thumb going down. Start with the string closest to you. They can name it G, C, E, A. Have to go backwards. A, E, C, G. Play only the G. Play only the A. Play only the C. Let them quiz each other. And then you introduce the index. They can do it the other way, coming towards them. And then you show them the picture. Well, G, C, A, E, A. That's hard to memorize. Well, think about got to catch them all. Of course, from Pokemon. Gotta catch a ball, Pokemon. That's how to pick a string. Picking is different than strumming. You don't do one or the other. You you have to, you, uh, you have to make sure you show them both. So you can use your thumb or your index, but thumb for the most part is always going to go down. You always want to use the flesh on the ukulele because this is a classical type nylon strings. The flesh gives, produces a good sound. So the way you tell them, it's like you're petting a small animal every time you you play the string and it's like you're petting from the head all the way to the tail in a very light movement that's going down one two three four index comes up towards you like you're scooping peanut butter so you get a scoop of peanut butter mm, that's delicious scoop of peanut butter Ooh, that's delicious down up down up down up, down, up. let them play with the tempo great way to introduce two ways that they could eventually uh, go on their own. We have our first chord, C chord. We're going to actually show them the third finger. They need to know how to use this. Third finger, ring finger. You're going to count with them. Go on ukulele. Go to the first string. For the first string is that A string all the way closest to the floor. Take your ring finger and you're going to count one space. The space before the metal bar. It's called a fret space. One space, two space, third space, three space. Notice how you see it in both pictures. They can see the hand there and also the dot. And then instruct them to strum the chord. You also realize if you look, the letters up there are colored. And if you're a good music teacher, what does that match up with? That's right, your handbells, your boom whackers. If you put little stickers on your xylophone or your metallophones, it will match up with those as well. So the kids can do boarding chords. They can alternate maybe C, E, C, G, octave Cs, and now you have the whole room opened up so that everyone can play along. It does not matter if you have the ukulele or not. It also helps them feel successful because chances are they've already learned how to do board and style things or learned how to do xylophones and telephones, so this will just be reinforcing and also boosting their confidence so that they're learning something new and also working with something that's old. We have the A minor chord. Notice how we used our third finger before, now we use our second finger. Tell the kids, fourth string closest to you is the G string. Take your second finger, your middle, and place it on not the first space of the first string, or fourth string, not the second space of the fourth string, but, yeah, sorry, second space of the fourth string. That's what I said. <laughs> so make sure it's pressed on there. They have to use their fingertip. So show them that it has to be pressed down like this, not like this. Have them practice pressing their thumb and middle together and have that pressure right there. Make sure the thumb is right behind the neck. We don't really talk too much about thumb placement just because the thumb often gets in the way of the ukulele because it's so small, but they can be feeling the thumb press under the middle. Then you have your A minor chord. And then use the playing guide below. Notice how you still have the color coded chords above you, yay. Now you have the F chord. This is a one finger F chord. So show them your first finger, show them pressing into the thumb. Now, we're not going to be on the first string pressing. We're going to be on the second string. This is the E string. Go on the first fret, first finger. That's easy to remember. This is actually an F sus2 or F add2 chord, but it doesn't matter. It will still sound nice. We'll later learn how to do the full F chord, but for now, the kids only need to learn how to do that. So after you've done all that, you realize, oh, we've learned three chords. What can we do with three chords? Maybe we should do it with some songs. So this is a great little... Uh, song uh, item that is on the actual slide Change 
It goes electric, wavy when I turn it on. All from my city, all from my home. We're flying up, no ceiling when we in our zone. I got that sunshine in my pocket, got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it, moving so phenomenally. We have the final part of the lesson. If you stop the lesson there, that would be great. Finish on a high note. If you want to reinforce the lesson, then you want to finish teaching the F chord, which they're eventually going to need to know how to do. It's very important that they finish learning this chord. The full F chord, they still have their first finger. They know that. Now, I'll tell them kids the correct way to play the F chord, now that we're professional ukulele players, is you're going to add the A minor finger that you used earlier. So that second finger, remember for the A minor chord? And you're going to add that to the F chord that you know with the one finger, put them together, and you have what is the correct F chord. So here's what it sounds like with the A minor. Here's the one finger F. And then here is it with the correct note pressed. It's very slight. So, but you want to make sure you teach it correctly. Here, you're going to see one more set of songs that you can find. Uh, this is two chord songs, and it uses the correct C and F. I saw her today at the reception. In the background, you can hear the rhythm. A bit in a hand. So you can have the kids. Well, kids, want to try to catch it. She was going to be her connection. At her feet was They would be done with the first lesson.
and they would be, oh, wow, I love ukulele. Where can I go buy my own? Well, kids, go on the Google machine and order one. Tell your parents it's cheaper than buying a video game, and they buy you video games all the time. So instead of buying a video game, buy a ukulele. That will last you years and years and years and years and years. Oh, but that's a lot of money. Well, they buy you video games. So, lesson two. This is, for me, a week after I would have seen my kids. I'm on a six-day rotation. I would feel confident about everything before that, and I would have been happy to move forward. So a brief review probably won't spend longer than six or eight minutes. Notice how you want to go over a song or two just to make sure that they enjoy it, they remember what they did, and it's always fun when they see the song, the memory will come back faster. We're going to be learning a G7 chord, which is premier if you need to look at folk songs, classic children's songs. Uh, and then just more of a song library. You need to always have a one and five chord learned so that you can do that. And then we're gonna be explaining how we're gonna be alternating chords, which is the hardest thing. This is where ukulele players and guitar players just hate what they're doing because they can't change chords. So I wanted to start off hard on the kids. Look kids, here's all the information. You have a C chord, which you already know. We already know what notes are in a C chord, C, E, G. It's the one chord. We would have already learned that in our bone worker lesson. And now we're going to look at our G7 chord. This is a difficult chord. It's one of the hardest kids. But once you learn how to do this chord, you're going to feel so accomplished. Now, what we do is we take our ring finger, which is the third finger. It's on the third fret of the first string. Now we're going to move to the G7 chord. Slide your third finger to the second fret of the first string. Now you're going to add your second finger on the second fret of the third string. So it makes like a little skip right there. And then finally, take your first finger and put it on the first fret of the second string. So make sure you go through one at a time, show them. All right, C chord, slide, first finger, second finger. Play each note so you can hear it. Strum the note. If something sounds wrong, chances are this one might be in the wrong place. Maybe this one's in the wrong place. Maybe this is in the wrong place. Those are the sounds you're gonna hear. When in doubt, go back and carefully track each finger and press it hard and make sure that your fingers are only pressing that note and it's not blocking a note. Always fingertips, always fingertips. All right, so you have the one chord on the G7. You need to take time on that, make sure they rotate, and everyone does that. Because if they don't get that, they're not gonna get beyond this point. Trust me. So, G7 chord, now we see it in big pictures. Let's practice strumming it together now that we've learned it, children. Yes, we're so good. It, that's okay if that sounds like this. You'll get it, just keep practicing. That's okay if it sounds gross. Just keep going through it. Maybe you'll get it better the next time. Yes, that was hard to hear, I'm sorry. All right, pivot chord. This is what most people don't understand unless you are actually a guitar player or a ukulele player. You need to understand that uh, there is a pivoting or sliding of your fingers. Uh, it's very similar to if you are holding a clarinet or saxophone or recorder. Your left hand usually is going to stay in the same area, and your thumb is always, for the most part, on that C hole or B hole in the back covering it. Those are things that you depend on for everything else to work, right? To play a D note, an E note, an F note, your left hand needs to always be in a good position. So in a way, you're pivoting things. One thing stays, one thing moves. So look at the F chord. We know an F chord. We already practiced with our first finger and second finger. Now take the way to change it is you take your second finger and it goes to the third string. And then now we need all we need to do is add our ring finger, our third finger on the second fret of the first string. So that's how you teach pivoting. Your first finger always stays, children. Everything else moves. This is a great way to really get this chord structure down. Do not teach the C chord to the G7 because it's just too hard to practice. Let them practice this and let them feel comfortable and then go on and let them practice strumming with the actual C and G7. By the way, did you notice how the paper up there says to strum on beat one? So let them say, okay, kids, we're doing whole notes. Two, three, four. Now let's do half notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
this will take a while and you want to have plenty of rotations. This is about halfway in the lesson. So keep in mind, this is the slow part. Lesson two is the slow part. All right, now we're going to really make sure they have this down. Everyone's got it. Okay, let's make some beautiful music. The first two blocks, let's go ahead and make sure there's a C chord and the last two blocks are G7 chord. Down, 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 one, two, three, G7, one, two, three, four. Even if they mess up, they would have had time to fix it. Now do it again. Three, four, one, two, three, G7, change. Now, children, let's practice with our down up strum. Remember, it's twice as fast, like eighth notes. One, two, 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 starting the C. One, two, 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 three, two, four, two. One, two, 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 three, two, four. J7, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two. One, two, 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 three, two, four, two. One thing I forgot to mention if you're doing mallets or boom markers, when you have the eighth notes or the down up strum, that's a great opportunity to do. Uh, that alternating board and boom, 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 instead of hands together. Dun, 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 dun. It sounds really cool with a lot of instruments. Okay, old McDonald. Yay, we get to do a kid's song. Notice how we couldn't do a kid's song until we learned how to do a five chord, or in this case, five seven. So I put the music uh, in the bold letters. You'll notice that it matches the color of the C, so you can tell them C chord. You can do octave C or C G. And then the E color coded for the G7, the G chord, so they can do octave Gs. Notice how those are actually going to follow on a steady beat. Old MacDonald had a farm. E -I -E -I -O. So that's actually more of a half note. So if you wanted to go and add a little bit more of the actual rhythm of the song, teach it to them as a down up so they can feel that motion. So that it doesn't go too fast, but they feel their hands moving and feel that rhythm moving. Oh, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O. This part just stands the C chord. With a point, point here, and a point, point there. Here a point, there a point, everywhere a point. I took out a couple of chord changes in there just because I don't expect the kid to do this. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, little oink oink here and a oink oink, I don't, I don't, that's too much. All right, Lion Sleeps Tonight. This is the last song of the regular lesson before you get to final lesson three. Now notice how we have the full F chord and then the G7, which we've already learned. Notice how they still color coded, by the way, F is line. G is green, C is still red. So if you want to, we can reinforce that, kids. Don't forget, if you're doing mallets, C, E, G, or C, G, or F, A, C, F, C, or G, B, D, F, choose any of the four. Now, a great way that you can do this, which I've uh, seen at a few workshops, is you break up the class. If they are not re yet comfortable changing chords, don't take away their confidence. Rows one and two, do the C chord. Rows to uh, three and four, do the F chord, and five and six to the G7 chord. Wait for your turn, but have your fingers ready. Row one and two, you ready? Row three and four, it's your turn. G7, I oh, so back to C, sorry, backward one and two. And then row five and six, your turn. Wow, someone sounds a little odd over there. Back to the beginning. Row three and four. Seven. All right, let's try the song. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. And the kids will feel so happy. Oh my goodness, I've learned a song. I know that from the Lion King. Let's watch the Lion King when I go home now. Yay. And then, of course, if you have time, attempt to either switch around the groups or attempt to have them do the chord changes. I would not say go for the chord change right away. It's not going to be there. Trust me, not even adults can learn it this fast. All right, lesson three. Okay, disclaimer. If you have second and third graders, maybe just stop there. That was great. We learned so much. 
I want to do it all again. Let's do another couple of lessons. Hey, kids, why don't we sing some songs, the other songs we know? Let's sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, because you know that it only needs a one and a five, seven chord. Oh, right, kids, let's sing another song uh, uh, um, down by the river. Any song that you want that, that is an easy folk song, because you have two chords that they know. And you don't even need sheet music. You don't need PowerPoints. So moving forward, upper elementary, middle school, to get to the harder chords and also the harder rhythms. There's also an optional of doing tablature. Yes, you can do tablature with ukulele. It's the amateur way of learning how to do ukulele and guitar. And trust me, they're going to, in the long run, learn how to do it anyways. You don't necessarily need to read notes in the ukulele. If you do, there's a whole other separate application you need to do for that. Don't mix them up. Stick with one thing if you're doing classroom settings. All right, let's move on. G chord, notice how this is completely different than G7. Well, the biggest difference is the triangle shifted. It used to be this lovely triangle. Now it's gonna change to this triangle. So it flips. Think of isosceles triangle flipping. So the fingers have to change because you can't do this and then magically get that over there, you can't. So to take away the F note, it now needs to come to a G note. So you have your B there, you have your, so your B there, you have your first finger on the D and your ring finger on the G. So this one is gonna take a while for kids. Notice how we didn't learn this right away. And you, you don't have to teach this chord. You could always just do a G7. It sounds so similar, no one cares, it all sounds good. This is a hard thing to do. Teaching a D chord in the guitar, which is the same shape, is a hard thing to do. So take time on it. This could be split into two lessons, just practicing this and reviewing. We have our strum patterns. This is pretty cool because you can actually have the kids practice this and play this. So that way they can get a lot of practice on the G chord. You ready? So it's just steady beat. In a moment, the video will show you that it's gonna go to the next rhythm, that's what they call rhythm E. There's the arrow. They all go through and just run through. Then finally, we have even harder patterns. You can skip this if you want, but if you are gonna be doing some of the reggae songs later in the videos, then you need to know how to do the upbeat. And we'll talk about how to do the upbeat in an easy way. All right, so we have some rewarding songs for the kids. These are one chord songs, and they go through and do all the chords that the kids already know. Notice how the rhythms are gonna be harder though. Get your G chord ready. Okay, you have one more set of songs that
uh, you can go along to. These are much more advanced. And maybe you can pause in between each video and go over the chords. Okay, so we see a C chord, a G chord, a minor, and F. Now, luckily, it's going to use those same chords, and they're just going to switch in order. But still, go through and practice with them. And no reason to zip by these, because if you just press play and walk away, they're going to do this the whole time. You're like, yeah, I can play that song. Look, I'm playing it. No, you're not playing it. Ah. Well, you done done me, and you bet I felt it. I tried to beat you, but you're so hot that I melted. Now, notice I the fell right the through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back Before the cool done run out I'll be giving it my best This and nothing's gonna stop me But divine intervention I reckon it's again my turn To win some or learn some But I won't hesitate No more, no more It cannot wait I'm yours so you'll notice some of the songs are still sure you give it all but so I want some more and I'm waiting you can use for to take a song and figure out what key it's in and lower it or raise it with or without you this one notice how you can practice doing all those other things instead of the steady beat
with them. Take your time. All right, optional part. If you do not know what tablature is, I mean, you'll learn a little bit from me right now, but you need to take a sabbatical and learn that on your own because it's a very different thing. If you don't know what tablature is, you need to go learn about it, be confident with it, and then teach it to the kids. It won't take you about an hour just researching and playing it, but you really need to be confident with it. Otherwise, you're gonna mix up yourself with the string numbers, and you're gonna mix up the kids. And you don't wanna mix up the kids with that because then they're gonna learn it wrong, and when they learn it wrong, say they wanna keep learning outside of school, they're gonna forever learn it wrong because their music teacher learned it wrong and talked to them. So when we improvise, we're gonna actually do some playing around first. You can uh, have them use their first finger only just so they can really feel confident. So here's my first finger. I'm just using it. And go ahead and show them the third fret so that they know there. And you can have them do their name. Uh, Robert, Murillo, Murillo, Robert. I have glasses, glasses I have. You can do anything. Uh, J.O. Davis, Bruins. I like cotton candy. Anything you want. Have the kids show each other. They can teach each other their, their songs. Now you can improvise on more than a string. We have A and C, which you just learned, and now we have E and G. If you know that, that's part of our pentatonic. So let's see what we can play just on that. Let the kids feel the groove. If they haven't heard the song before, let me play around with it with some percussion first. Feel that.
easily. So that's a four note improvised. We did one uh, one string improvised, and then we did two string improvised on four string on, on four notes. And now this actually can awaken up all four strings. Yes, that sounds like a lot, but let's look at what we know. We already know the first string and second string. We've already just did that. Well, let's now use our correct finger, just like our C chord. We know how to do that. Okay, you got that? Great, so we know that the, that is half of the strings. The other half is gonna use your second finger. Let's go on a string we know. We already know the fourth string, A minor position. So just do open G to the second fret, A. Now do the same thing on the, the third string. Open C, second fret, D. It's easy because it's the same finger. So go through and name the notes. This is just for you, not for the kids. You could do it with the older kids. But really, know what you're doing. G, A, C, D, E, G, A, C. Now, you can have them approach it from an A minor chord perspective. So maybe you have some kids play A minor chord. approach it from a major chord, C major chord. Obviously, don't have them do the same thing. I'm just showing you. So you have your C chord, have that approach. So the kids would have felt like, oh, wow, this is, I hear two different things. It's really nice. I'm playing the same five notes. I'm doing it on the boom whackers. I'm doing the metallophones, head, head, handbells, have only the ukuleles do the chords. Have only the mallets do the chords. Have only the boomwhackers do the notes. You choose. This is a great orf moment, great improvisation moment. Spend time on this. Have fun with that. Now, tabs. We're going to get to it. Here. Here we go. Here we go. Don't get them confused. You have the fourth string closest to you, our G, right? Okay, so you need to look at the ukulele the way you're looking at that picture. I'm going to turn around and pretend like I'm the picture, and I'm looking at it. So I'm saying G, C, E, A. You with me so far? G, C, E, A. So now I'm, I'm still looking at my ukulele. I'm looking at the picture now. And the picture is showing zero, which stands for zero frets. It's the number of frets. So if I'm not pressing anything down, I'm pressing zero. Zero, 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 zero. I'm reading it from G to A. So it's kind of like you're looking, it's easier if you're looking at it this way, looking directly at you ukulele, and oh, that makes sense. It looks just like the paper if I look at it this way. But it's tricky because you're playing ukulele this way. So you have to think like it's inverted, like it's going down when it actually looks like it's going up on the paper. So I'm gonna keep holding it this way. Look at the next one. So take your first finger. Oh, there's one. That's the first fret. One on the G, one on the C, one on the E, one on the A. Well, let's do our second fret. You can do the same finger or you can do your second finger. It doesn't matter. But for the sake of keeping a position, I'm just going to use my second finger. This is really good, too, because when you start to teach bar chords, if you do want to go on, you can show bar chords. Look, it's just like going in a straight parallel line. We have our E chord. So it's just another way to really show people how to learn. Now, looking at a song that actually has we're looking at tablature here. Now it's all on the G, which is the string closest to you, or the first line. So literally it's open, zero, third fret. You can use your first finger, and then fifth fret. Now the kids can do this, that's fine, but as a musician, you know, you wanna be more efficient. about the counting the kids will recognize the tune and that's all that matters let's look at the second line zero three four three zero okay can we make sure that only ukuleles are doing this everyone else y'all can play a open uh, a g chord so we'll play your octave g's
Now you can actually play along with the song once they get comfortable. And it loops it over and over again. All right, jump in, kids. And then press pause. Let's rotate. Let's get everyone else practicing that. Hey, by the way, kids, you think maybe you can figure out some of these notes on the mallets and the boom whackers? <laughs> Probably not. But it's always fun to get them to try to do an activity while they are waiting for their turn. So now we have Have a few more. We got the White Stripes, Seven Nation Army. Very cool song. Now you're gonna notice the pitch of the last note being wrong, but that's okay. Now instead of doing that last note. They already know low rider, so you could tell the kids, hey kids, can you be playing the G chord? And everyone else is gonna do the war low rider song. Sorry for the squeaking, a band-aid is not always the best way to play. So you're gonna hear the song they already know. When you're playing fast, it is best just to stay on one finger. So I recommend that. I would not recommend doing up and down. When you pick, you do want to actually let it feel like a guitar, like a, a, a like an actual picking. Um, so I'm gonna show you again so you can see how fast it is. You could do it with uh, just your finger. It's up to you. Okay, so uh, other things I've added, I just have some old songs I used to use. Once again, color coded, matched up as close to the rhythm as possible. Um, let's do one that's a little trickier. You can just see how you have to break down a song that has difficult rhythm. extra ones that I've done over the years. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary, but they're all only going to use just the, the chords they have learned. Um, there is a songbook. Yes. So I uh, took the songbook found on this site 
and I shortened it to a lot of easier songs that the kids would be able to do. So if you had a ukulele club, that'd be perfect. Print out the little packet that I made, put in binders, and then run through the packet through the whole year. Um, you could also take snapshots of the packet and then use it in a PowerPoint and just say, oh, we're just gonna learn this extra song today if you wanna do ukuleles periodically. Um, and this is all the resources I pulled a lot of things from. Um, it's a great company. They don't really know how to present this to young children. Um, luckily, I've done things like this for many years. So when I saw this resource, I was like, wow, this could be good to use, but you need to do a lot more processing and supporting and getting a lot of practice time and get their engagement going so that they don't just give up because they can't do a G chord the second time you see them, the first time you see them. So look up any of those resources and then always email me if you have any other questions. Okay, thank you very much. Hope this was helpful.